The following documents and recordings are the eighth instalment in a compilation detailing the events of the archaeological team sent to base Camp Piedra, consisting of Dr. Carito Ureta, Lucas Criado, Ava Olivia Moreno, Dr. Josefa Guerrero, Simon Hall, and Dr. Xiao Liu. Following the previous instalment, Dr. Josefa, Dr. Liu, and Mr. Hall continue to attempt radio contact across an array of channels as Miss Moreno descends down into the infested base camp Piedra. In the winter months, snowstorms and rainfall in the Patagonian ice fields can drastically affect the landscape. Worsened by heavy winds, such storms can reduce visibility and lead to glacial calving, ice collapses and avalanches. During these conditions, travel is not advised. The White Vault. During the time of this team's work on Cerro Torre, the Argentinian National Meteorological Service released reports regarding a strong front pushing into the mid-Patagonian mountain range, causing the fog. These reports support the records from Base Camp Piedra. Additionally, the fog documented by the archaeological team was reported to have rolled down into the valley below, but unlike in the mountain, the fog in the lowlands lifted over the course of two days. The snowstorm appears to have been isolated to the western side of Cerro Torre across the glacial field. The following is a recording from Miss Moreno's smartphone. From this recording onward, none of the documents presented were saved to the base camp digital backup as it was no longer connected to power and could not sync with paired devices. Okay. I heard something move. It was heavier. I think it was Lucas. There. Lucas? Lucas! Hey, Simon will be fine, but you can't keep sneaking around. It's dangerous. We only have the one line sunk. Where are you? Lucas? <sighs> Shit. Doesn't he? He still has the gun. Come down to see Ava. Lucas! <sighs> Hi. Everything's fine. Simon will be fine. You shouldn't be walking around off the trail. Will you come back with us? Can you show us how to use the radio? Walk with me. Where? To the tent. You are nearly there. The insects are ruining everything. They have energy to work off after resting for so long. What? In the hall, in the dark, it makes them go to sleep. But once they see the light, the white, they wake up. They'll be awake until it's over. They have a beautiful shine. Nearly halfway there. You should understand, Ava. Few make it all the way, most disappear, but some of them come out this way. Imperfect, but so much better. Uh, quasi perfect. You knew the bucks would be there. In the cave? You knew there was a cave. <sighs> we use bright. You should be excited. We have different paths, but we'll all end up there. Why are they all biting me? Tal vez los locos saben mejor. No, no, you little. <laughs> no. É uma péssima troca. Eu tô aqui pra você. Não pode desistir de mim em tão pouco tempo. Isso é o um erro. Não. Não. Eu sinto muito. Lucas, sinto muito don't run off. Você. Stay on the path. Again. 
hauling this stuff out there is going to take hours. <sighs> this one's for you, Dr. Leo. Hope it helped. This next written account is brief. It was written on a single piece of loose paper and found among a collection of other loose notes written by other members of the team. This is the only section written by Mr. Criado. The handwriting is erratic and there is a thumbprint in blood pressed into the page. The writing is addressed to his employer. Souza, você sabia o que eu queria? Eu trabalhei tanto por isso. Por que acabou desse jeito? Eu trouxe eles aqui. Eu ajudei eles a abrirem as portas. Eu estava pronto, mas eu fui trocado. Souza, you knew what I wanted. I worked so hard. How did it end up like this? I've brought them here. I helped you open the doors. I was ready. <laughs> but I was passed over. Everything I have given. And I was forgotten. <laughs> Isn't that right? I just wanted what was the best. What is best? How I worked for you? How long I struggled? And this is what I get? <laughs> oh, but I get to see it. I see the beautiful works. <laughs> the carvings. The stories across every rock face. We protect what is to come? At least I do, Sosa. I do. Have you seen them, Sosa? Have you placed your hands upon their creations? <laughs> I can see it even now. <laughs> when you see it, it sees you too. <laughs> when you hear it, it hears you too. When you feel it, it touches you. <laughs> and when it calls you, <laughs> it has you. It is clear that Mr. Criado was not in his right mind when writing the previous passage, as the four sentences at the end were repeated down the page until there was no space left for him to write. This next section is a continuation of the notes written by Dr. Guerrero in the back of the black spiral bound notebook. This is only a section of the note. More sections will become relevant later on. Aparte de esa molesta y confusa respuesta que recibimos por la radio, nunca recibimos ningún llamado. Al menos, no hasta el momento. Estuvimos como cinco minutos en cada canal, pero no estábamos preparados para esto. Hace algún tiempo atrás, <sighs> aside from the one upsettingly confusing response on the radio, we never received a callback, not so far. We spent about five minutes on every channel, but we were not prepared for this. A while ago, maybe a few years back, I remembered someone telling me there was an emergency radio channel, but I can't think of what it was. We'll be working on the radio for most of tomorrow as well. We think we'll have to try a single channel for about an hour or so, but it limits whom we could reach. Eva would know more, so we'll work with her, but she's been exhausted and will be off no further assistance today. I don't know the time. The sun sets so early. <sighs> I should be trying to sleep. This certainly isn't helping. I think the only person who could possibly sleep in this situation is Eva. Maybe Hall, if he were here. He didn't see the tent, or Lucas, and he would be exhausted from pain. Shortly after we tried the radio, we heard yelling from down the mountain. We thought Eva may have been in danger or that it was Carito, so we left in a hurry. Liu and I could hear the insects before we even made it to the bottom of the path. They paused. When we first approached, the droning was subdued, but within moments, it filled the air like a roar. Eva was coming out of the tent, howling at the back of drives, foods, sleeping bags. She had a black eye when I saw her. Lucas had the gun in his hands, and he screamed at her as she continued howling supplies out. He was covered in red wells, like his skin was boiling just beneath the surface. Eva saw us, up the hill, and motioned for us to hide. 
Lucas was so unstable at that point, and we were too afraid to do much. We remained hidden against the cliff face, and soon enough, after much yelling and cursing in Portuguese, Lucas scrambled off into the fog north of the campsite. After, we rushed down to Eva, and she seemed adamant about being okay, even given the bruises we could see. We helped move the boxes, but those strange insects were first. Eva was right, they appear unintrusted in her, and don't bite her. She brought everything far enough away from the tent, enough that the swarm did not bother us, and we helped it to take it away. She's injured too. The black eye is worse up close. She says that Lucas surprised her. He left at one point, then returned running at full speed into the tent, trying to pull her out and away from the packs. She had to fight him off to run back into the tent. He tried to get back to her, but after a few more baits or stings from the insects, he retreated and tried threatening her with the gun instead. She got hit hard in a few places, but her arm hurts most. She insisted on helping more, but was unable to carry anything of significant weight up the path. We decided to stay together, which meant we were forced to move up the path very slowly, returning several times to bring up more supplies. By the time we reached the cave to bring in the first load of gear, we were out of breath and aching. When we returned to where we had left Hall with the radio, he was missing. The following recording is from one of the two somewhat damaged video cameras. The file can only be partially rendered, and it appears to be filmed in a night mode as the few fully rendered visuals are in an amplified black and white display. I see a damn thing. All right, um, something moved in the inner cave. I heard it. Uh, maybe it'll happen again. <sighs> maybe not. Um, emergencia, emergencia. Este es Simon Hall, del equipo de la dra, Josefa Guerrero. Uh, estamos estrapados en el lado oeste de Sierra Torre. Somos seis person personas y necesitamos ayuda. Estoy hero y nue, nuestro guía está lastimado. Por favor, respondan. <coughs> Por favor. I've been looking at some of our findings while they're down at the tent. I collected a few of the stone beads from the floor when Professor Guerrero and I were exploring the hallway. Now that I have time to look at them, they're not all the same. Um, a few of them are, are the perfectly round stone beads with small holes for stringing them up. God. Okay, that's not coming out clearly on the video at all. One of them is a small bug carving, like uh, a beetle or maybe some kind of kikada. It's got wings, and the hole for the string seems to go under the wing section. It is so well carved but there's only one of those collected. Now, among the other perfectly smooth round beads are these other round ones. They're not perfectly smooth. They have ridges wrapped around the center with the ridges starting at the carved hole at the top and then coming together again at the bottom. Like longitudinally, if the holes were the poles. The ones I collected all look very similar. I picked up a sample of 20 beads. One is the carved bug. 13 are perfectly smooth, and the remaining six are these pill bug grooved ones. <gasps> there it was. <sighs> uh, 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 Professor Ava, um, if you plan on coming back anytime soon, quicker would be preferred. Okay. It's gone again. What? The, what was that? Emergencia. E Emergencia. Esta es Simon Hall. Simon Hall, con ladra, Josefa Guerrero. Somos un uh, grupo de seis 
personas atrapadas en el lado oeste del Quero Torre. No, uh, uh, no necesitamos ayuda. Hay personas heridas. Por favor, responda. Simon? Simon, huh? are you there? Hello? Simon, is that you? Dr. Retta! Oh my God, okay. Oh man, we thought you fell down the mountain or something. Oh my God, we were so worried. Wait, I, I, I can't see you. Simon, I got hurt. Wait, how bad? Please help me. Can you move? I can crawl over. Move toward the light of the outer cave. Are you in the hall? Simon! Yes, sorry, I'm just, ah, uh, sorry, I'm a bit, I'm a bit slow right now. I, I found some hiking poles. I swear, I'll, I'll be there soon. Professor, can you hear me? I, I found her. Dr. Ureta's up here, no. but she's oh. hurt. Oh. Ureta, where are you? Doctor, diga algo. Uh, what? Where the hell is the statue? Dr. Ureta, Dr. Ureta, are you there? Simon. Uh, uh. Simon. I'm sorry. I'm coming. The stairs are difficult. Ah, uh, I swear I'm coming. Hold on. Uh, uh. Don't go near the statues. It's gone, Doctor. And if you see Lucas, don't approach him. Something is wrong with him. He's, um... Ah! Uh, 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 uh. Okay, where are you? Doctor? Dome esta tu? The recording ends there. The last clearly captured visual shows of a short flight of descending stairs and the bottom section of several strings of stone beads. After that point, the recorder was shaken too violently for anything to be discerned. Then it cuts out. This next section is a continuation of the previously presented notes written by Dot Guerrero in the back of the black spiral-bound notebook. This is the final remaining section from the entry. Para el momento en que alcanzamos la cueva para traer el primer cargamento del equipo, estábamos sin aliento y adoloridos. Cuando regresamos a donde habíamos dejado a Hall con la radio, él ya no estaba. Cuando nos dimos cuenta By the time we reached the cave to bring in the first load of gear, we were out of breath and aching. When we returned to where we had left Hall with the radio, he was missing. Once we saw that he was not in the cave, nor outside near the small landing, we grew worried. A camera is missing, as well as one of the sturdier hiking poles we left up in the cave earlier this morning. We are at a loss. Even needed to address her arm, so we waited with her while she looked it over. I feared Lucas may have broken it due to the discoloration, but Eva thinks it's just a bad bruise. She didn't seem too worried over her black eye, and when she was ready to move again, we began looking for her. We went further into the cave, since we didn't see him leave on our way up. We found feathers first, long brown and black feathers that looked to have recently fallen from a mountain bird. We followed them deeper into the hall, and down the steps descending to the amphitheater. There was more than feathers the further we went. There were patches of skin still attached to lumps of blood clump feathers still clung to the follicles, like the scant remains of what's left after a cat plays with a small dead sparrow. We called out for Hall, but we never heard a replay. Eventually, when we returned to the frontmost cave, we noticed that one of the statues is missing. It has been missing all night now. But none of us can remember if it was there when we walked up with supplies. I thought it was, but I can't be sure. I can't be sure of much, not now, after everything that has happened. We cracked some chemical lights and left them in the deeper hall. 
Liu and Eva heated up some food, but none of us ate enough to call it a meal. This place has turned so cruel, putting nuts in our throats. When I first saw the glyphs, I was astonished. I had been stuck for too long, thinking that the rest of my career would be spent sat behind a table growing wrinkled and frayed like so many of the worn-out books I put over. But this was a dream, something I could share and flaunt, and I let it become a thing of blind hope. How fucking stupid. <sighs> I should try to sleep. To my husband, I hope you can forgive me for all those stupid fights. None of what we curse over is worth the feeling I have in my gut, worrying you may think I love you any less now than the day we tipped our kayaks over in Villarlik. I hope our little adventures are not yet over, but I don't think I want to do any mountain hikes again for a while. The following is a separate recording session by Mr. Hall from the same cracked camera. The lens appears to have been entirely broken, if not fully removed by this time, and it may have been recording for use of the flashlight function. There are two relevant sections. This is the first. <gasps> Wait, where? Simon. Oh. oh, God. Took a hit to the head. Seeing things. Oh. Bugs. Crazy guys. Mountain shit. Snow. Fog. Broken equipment. Impalement. Ah. I'm done with this. Done. Ah. Ah. The following document was written by Dr. Xiao Liu on several loose sheets of paper. They look as though they once belonged in a blank notebook, having a crease along the center and holes for attaching to a spine. They are slightly waterlogged, the ink spreading somewhat across the page. While the majority of the note is in Mandarin, a section near the end is written in English. We are stuck in this cave. I saw the tents. They are overrun with those black bugs. This has begun to unravel so quickly. Most recently, Simon is now missing. We're all worried. Josefa has been writing all night so far, and when I think about it, I am happy to know we will leave more behind than the others did. If anything can be found, it is a small comfort. 
We went searching for Samet recently. We have not found him yet. There was no trail of blood, no intentional marks left for us to follow. At least nothing we could find in this darkness. It's just past midnight, and we have very few of the resources we will need to properly search for him. Whether he left the cave to go down the mountain or crawled further in will be our first question. We are either going to search through the impossible darkness of these carved halls or through the treacherous endless white haze that has encapsulated the place. Either way, I will be surprised to find him alive, if at all. When we went into the carved hall, we found the feathers of one of those large Andean vultures. They were scattered about, some with blood and flesh attached. But while Joseph was examining that, I went to look at the mud nest Simon had fallen into. There was still blood on the floor and on the guanaco bone that impaled his ankle. But there was something else as well. I only noticed it because my light reflected off something. In the wall, once covered by the mud nest, there was a metal blade tip, as though it had been thrust into the wall and broken off from the larger weapon. I have it with me, and under closer inspection, I believe it is steel. I have yet to discuss this with Josefa, but I did my own extensive preliminary research on South American pre-Columbian history before leaving for this trip. If it is in fact steel, some version of high carbon steel, it is not pre-Columbian. I have no way to tell the age by looking at it, but it may be proof that the Great Hall was open in the past, before us, but after Europeans made their way into South America. There is so much here, but I have neither the time or the patience to stay. If I cannot make it out of this, I have compiled my notes. Find my journal, it has some answers, and hopefully someone can make sense of the rest. I am sorry that I do not speak or write Spanish, but hopefully this is enough. Do not allow them to send more people into the door at the back of the cave. Cover the cave, cover the statues. The ice is melting, so you must bring rocks. Do not bring tourists. Do not bring more academics. This is not an attraction, but a trap. I fear the only thing we will learn here is what awaits us after death. This next section is from the 360 degree camera. It was set up in the frontmost section of the cave. It operated on a pre-programmed schedule for the day and was set to record at differing light intervals, morning, noon and night. On this program, it records in 20 minute sections, twice in the morning, twice in the afternoon and twice in the evening. During the last afternoon session, it recorded Miss Moreno, Dr. Guerrero and Dr. Liu leaving the cave at differing times. At this point, both statues are still visible flanking the entrance to the cave. The final recording of the night shows that the snows have not stopped and one of the statues is missing from its alcove. The faint glow of lantern light can be seen from the deeper section of the cave and the sleeping bags and supplies are now no longer idly sitting in the cave entrance. This short audio recording was also picked up during this last recorded session. Now. 
The following is the second relevant section recorded by Mr. Hall on the cracked camera. It begins approximately 25 minutes after the previous entry ended. Oh, 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 God. Ooh, finally. Uh, yes, light. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Ava? Professor Guerrero? Dr. Liu? Can anyone hear me? What is that? What? Oh. What? Ava! Professor! Liu! Get me the hell out of here! Get me out of here! This concludes the records from the night the team separated from their guide Lucas Criado and retreated to the cave entrance. This completes the eighth set of documents related to the archaeological team sent to examine and record the petroglyphs found in the Patagonian ice field above Base Camp Piedra. The White Vault, 